I think the process of of um, changing from fear and moving into courage and moving into a more positive and joyful experience is actually in some cases there's a there's a lot of grieving I think that has to happen in that process too because you're you've moved out of fear um, but you've also there is loss in this change too and I think that um, even no matter how bad the situation was that you left there was still there's still loss in leaving it and I think that it's actually okay to grieve that loss and to experience that loss and that eventually as you let go of fear and you let go of grief then that creates the space for love and joy and other more positive feelings to come in and so there is a place where you do move beyond the fear and the loss and you can move into the joy and the future I think that so often um, we give compassion to the person who has been hurting us or who has hurt us in the past um, in order to preserve the relationship and in order to keep that relationship um, going um, up till this point. And so there's, I think, a lot of people um, have given a lot of their own compassion to the other person. They understand that they really don't mean to hurt them, that they understand that um, they're a human being with flaws and, and all of that. And, and while there may well be some part of that other person that does deserve the compassion, I think that there is a, a misplacement of of having too much compassion for the other person and not seeing that it's really important to have the compassion for yourself. And one thing that I want to share with you that I've learned spending time with my dad before he passed, which has had such an impact on my life. He was 83 years of age and he said to me, you're young, you need to spend time with you his mind was very fertile and active and vibrant his body was wasted he did not want to live and he said only the other day I was 40 years of age and I don't know where all the time went to I'm 83 and I don't want to live my body's not cooperating with me he said to me and I've got all this active, fertile mind because he was very lucid and everything. He said, so I want you to live. I want you to understand that this time goes so quickly. You look back and you wanted to know, he wanted to know, where did all the time go to? And so for me, like Oprah would say, that was a light bulb moment. Because in my own life, I look back and I was just 25 and I'm looking at myself and I'm like, he's right about this. A great thing that you can do, a great exercise that you can do that will help with acknowledging loss and pain is quite simply to take your hand, take a pen, put it on a piece of paper and draw your hand, outline your hand. And in your hand outline that's on the paper, take a finger, take a piece of a finger, take your thumb, take your palm and on that write all the different things that you have lost, all the different kinds of pain that you've experienced. What that does, when you look at it, when you sit back and you look at it, is you can see in fact that, that the things you've experienced have had a big impact on you, and, but they're not all of you. Um, it's kind of an interesting exercise to then go and draw that again a month later or a month after that or a month after that and see how that's changed. What parts of the picture are smaller now? What parts are bigger? How has your experience of your own loss changed?
over that, that time period. As we become familiar with our loss and our pain, as we start to really see it for what it is and understand, um, well, and get comfortable with it, um, it changes. And the change is what actually sets us free. Um, so when you can look back on stuff, and it might seem like, oh my God, I'll never be able to do this. But when you can go back and look back on things that you've happened and they're just things that have happened, they no longer hurt, um, then you'll know that you have made it through that part of your journey, that part of the pain. It's just something that's happened.